I never lose, either I win or I learn Those are my only options, to whomever it may concern About to be a hot topic, play with fire you get burned Ain't nobody give me nothing, whatever I got better I earn I never lose but I learn, learn, I either win or I learn, learn Those are my only options, to whomever Hey, hey, welcome to another episode of the Strong AF Podcast. I'm Ashley. I'm Yuri. And today we're going to be talking about uh, marriage. and Yay. <laughs> the old ball and chain. Hey, hey, hey now. The old lady. <laughs> hey, all these country terms. I'm not enjoying Lovely. this part. <laughs> the missus. So we're going to be talking the about. The better half. <laughs> that, those are better. Much better, babe. Um, so today, <laughs> no, don't don't go back there again. We're gonna be talking about boo, boo, boo thing. Gary, love. Bug. Okay, okay, okay. Listen, listen. See, you see, guys. See, this is marriage. All right. So we're gonna be talking about all things marriage and how we got married young and things that we had to overcome in our marriage because of that. Um, and I think really that anyone has to overcome in their marriage. Uh, and how we've worked through those things to create a stronger, healthier marriage. A little bit about our backstory. Um, we we had like a long dating history. Um, not long in the sense of actually dating, but long in the sense of finally starting to date, right? Yeah, had to, had to do a little theft there. <laughs> had to steal her away. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we started talking. This is so old school. <laughs> we started talking on MySpace. What? MySpace? <laughs> for, for any of you like under, I don't know, probably 28, <laughs> you may not even know what MySpace is. <laughs> so it was like the old school form of Facebook is the best way I can describe it. Um, I thought it was kind of cooler though, because you got to pick your songs and your background and all that stuff. It is what it was. <laughs> but uh, so he reached out to me on there and I actually went to school with his cousin. So we, we started talking a bit and then. Um, she told me she had a boyfriend. Well, I didn't have a boyfriend when we started talking. No. You just took too long to make your move. And then I started dating somebody else. No, I was busy. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, by the time we finally met up, we went on a date and it was so awkward. <laughs> um, he, as you can tell, like just from these podcasts, right? I'm very talkative. Very, very talkative. And Yuri's pretty quiet. I'm calm, cool, laid back. <laughs> Let me get my thoughts together. When I'm ready to speak, I'll speak. And uh, I'm not a very patient person. So. Not at all. <laughs> When we when we were on our way to the park, um, I was I was expecting him to talk to me. Right, we were we were driving, and it was our first date, and he was just like so quiet the whole way. <laughs> I was vibing to the music. I was listening to whatever was on our MP3 player. I thought, oh, okay, I never heard this. Trying to bob my head, just cool and just relaxed. I, I had enough, and I was like, Are you ever gonna talk? <laughs> It threw me for a loop. Like, damn, this woman just, just yelling at me like, talk down. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so then we went through the rest of our day, um, dropped him off because I decided to take my car, you know, being the smart thing to do as a woman, right? Because if you got to get away, you want to have your own ride. So I was like, you ride with me. <laughs> um, so then I dropped him off and we went our separate ways. We didn't talk for a while. Well, you forgetting the important part. You you left out. We went to the movies after we that. We seen some kind of horror movie or whatever. And you know how you got the armrest in between you or whatever. So I'm over there. I got my armrest. She's got hers. And then I guess she went to go grab my hand. So I'm thinking she wants the armrest, so I moved my hand out the way. I'm like, okay, I'll let you have that one. I didn't notice she wanted to hold my hand. I'm like, damn, you just yelled at me now. You want to hold my hand? So. I thought he was just like not into it. So I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> As you can see, we had miscommunication issues from the start. It all started with that yelling. <laughs> well, anyway, so we stopped talking for a while, and I was like, 
it's either 18 or 19. I think I was 18, getting ready to turn 19 when we first started talking. And I had already turned 19 by the time that we went on our first date. And so we kind of talked off and on after that. I got into a really bad, toxic relationship um, in between the time that Yuri and I went on a first date and then the time Yuri and I finally got together. Um, A really extremely toxic relationship. And we can get into those details later and like how I came out of that. Um, But then Yuri and I finally got back together um, on New Year's Eve. And just to give you a timeline, like we started talking in April. Uh, First date was in July. And then finally started dating on New Year's Eve. So no, I tell you, it was a long story. Like it was a long story, right? Yeah, a lot of bumps in the road. Yeah. Good thing is, note to any younger siblings out there who has an older brother who is sitting here telling you, do this, do this. Oh, uh, she's don't even waste your time, man. Just, just go on, just go on, man. She ain't even worth it. I didn't listen. <laughs> I listened before. It didn't go the way he intended. So I list. I didn't listen this time, and here we are. It worked out for you. <laughs> so we've been together ever since. Um, when we were, we've been together about a year and a few months, right? It's about 15 months when we got pregnant with our oldest. Um, I was still in college. I, we both were still in college. Yes. And I had just decided to add on to my degree. So I was studying business and my accounting professors were like, oh, you really need to double major. You're doing great in this. Like it would just be an extra year to get a double major. So I was like, sure, why not, right? Um, So then I add on a double major and then I got pregnant, um, which we weren't planning, but we We weren't not planning. We talked about it in the future, but... Yeah. So I had ended up, what happened was the birth control that I was on made me extremely sick. Um, And the doctor told me that I had to come off of it for a month and then they would put me on a new prescription. And Yuri and I were talking because we had already had conversations anyway. She said we had conversations. Ah, She may have told me. I was probably like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. The question went like this. Do you want to use protection or do you want to let whatever happens, happens? (laughs) And obviously his answer was not protection. So (laughs) um, anyway, uh, shortly after, actually two weeks after I went off the birth control, I found out I was pregnant. And that took me by surprise. I'll never forget that. (laughs) Come home from class, and then she's like, Oh, I'm pregnant. And I'm like, Oh, shit. I'm like, Damn, was, was I working? Yet? No, not yet. I was like, you, You're working at Sunny's, yeah, a waitress and stuff. We're both going to school. I'm like, Oh, damn. They're like, Dad, I gotta tell my mama <laughs> this and that because I'm still staying at home with my mom and stuff mm-hmm. like this. I'm like, Oh, oh my goodness, this is this is tough. Yeah, it was, it was really difficult. Um, And it's, you know, it's nothing that I would change, but looking back, like I definitely don't want my kids to have to go through the same struggles that we did um, along the way. And that also made it more difficult for our marriage. So uh, we decided to go ahead and get married, which we were planning on getting married after we graduated but we decided to go ahead and move up the date. And we got married that summer. I was like three months pregnant. And that was the worst honeymoon (laughs) in the world. Oh my goodness. Who are you telling me? The heat loss to the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA finals? Yeah, it was was awful. Yuri, that's the part you remember? (laughs) Not having to do your homework at McDonald's because the hotel had no Wi-Fi. Oh, it said (laughs) online that they had Wi-Fi, but... Yeah, it said online they had a lot of things that they didn't have. (laughs) Oh, and it was senior week, so, like, all the teenagers were there being crazy, and I was complete. I had terrible, terrible morning sickness, so... Basically, our entire time, I was just sick and sitting at McDonald's. So, yeah, that was awful. And then um, 
Talk about a happy meal. <laughs> we got home and my, so my mom had decided to uh, kind of finish out her garage and let us stay out there. That way we would have a place to stay while we were finishing school and getting a job and all that stuff. So that was really awesome. Um, but, you know, that was a lot of pressure on us too, right? Because we just got married and we're living with my mom mm -hmm. <clears throat> and pregnant. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, something that happens within a span of like five to 10 years for most people happened immediately for us. And by the time that we were married for six months, we had a son. So that was pretty extreme. And then I was also still in school. So I was doing classes online. And then I had some hybrid classes where I actually had to take YJ in with me. <laughs> um, so that was extremely interesting. Yeah, because I remember these conversations where you're asking, is it too much? I, I, we have him and then school and, mm -hmm. and then work and stuff like that. And I, like I always told you. I'm here for whatever. I'll do what I have to do, work whatever job and everything. You continue your education. You take the lead. I'll follow you. Whatever. And he was like, I was so stressed. I mean, I really thought that I was going to have to quit school, but you know, Yuri supported me the whole time. I couldn't have done it without that. And that was essential for us. Like that helped really build that foundation for our relationship, I believe. Yeah. Cause you would be at work and, or classes and stuff like that. And it would be me and YJ, mm -hmm. just me and my son. Yeah. While you're getting that education or at work. And then when I started working at KFC, I'll be, I'll be at work and be you too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That also made it really difficult because our schedules were conflicting and when we worked and um, everything. So we didn't get to see each other a lot either to start off with. You know, there'd be maybe a few hours here and there, or right at bedtime or something like that. So. Yeah. And then right after school, um, I got an extremely low paying job, because, but I had to take it because it had benefits. And where we were at, we didn't have any benefits. And unfortunately, um, the way the system set up, like... I don't want to get too far into this, but it's it's really a mess. Like people who are trying to further educate and better themselves um, don't get a lot of help. So we were actually told that we could get more help if we weren't in college. And we were just <laughs> not making a lot of money. Because even if you backtrack some, when you were pregnant, we were, would you have the pink man? Mm -hmm. Was it pink, pink Medicaid? Pink Medicaid and stuff like that, and then we had we had food stamps where it was like it fifty dollars. Yeah, a month. Fifty dollars a month. And they told us that we could get a lot more than that if we weren't in school. It was crazy. It's like, hold on, we 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 <laughs> we don't necessarily need it, but we're we're trying to make ends meet, trying to prepare for a child. We did need it at that right. point in time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we stay with your mom, so necessarily we, if they had food, it was. Yeah, we could, but <laughs> we would have been reliant upon mm -hmm. upon her to provide it at that point. But yeah, where we was trying to do whatever, and you telling us that just because we're trying to better ourselves through our education, that we need to quit <laughs> and just right. be dependent on the government for assistance. Right, exactly. And that was really frustrating, but. Um, I mean, we just kept working hard the best that we could do. And then I got a job again. It was a extremely low paying job, very entry level, um, probably below entry level. Um, and then you got to start somewhere. Yeah. We tried to get a house, but the, the deal fell through and we shouldn't have been able to afford the house anyway. Like we were young and we thought, Oh, okay. Like they're going to approve us. So that's going to work out. Well, it, it was not a good idea. And the guy who was actually going to approve our loan got let go because he was doing some shady stuff. So I'm fortunate for that because we wouldn't have actually been able to afford those payments in the long run. Definitely learned some lessons throughout this, that process while there was a property we put down like five hundred dollar deposit mm -hmm. for for land and lost that money. And yeah. 
it was it was crazy it was a huge learning experience um so then we decided to my mom actually had um a house that i grew up in uh and it was about 20 minutes from <clears throat> where i was working <clears throat> but yuri was still working where we were living at the time and so we stayed there in the garage but then yuri got let go they had like a management shift uh, someone completely bought out yeah, the new ownership franchise and new ownership and they let pretty much everyone go that was there and hired in all new people so uh he got let go he was out of a job it was just me working um and your classes i think were still online at the time mm -hmm. so we decided to move into my mom's other house at least that way we could have our own place and just pay her rent for being there um, because she was using it as like a rental home so we didn't want to cut off her income for that so we decided to move up there so we could at least have our own place and we were there for a good two years and I think that was helpful to be out and on our own place but at the same time we were still like relying on family because it was their place and then my grandparents would watch our oldest son while we were at work yeah found a new job out there but being out there it was pretty much i tell you it was the middle of nowhere yeah it was Walmart, like 30 minutes civil, civilization was like 30 to 45 <laughs> minutes away um the closest restaurant you had to have cash to pay for it, and we were no, i mean we weren't used to that you know like the millennial generation isn't used to having to carry around cash for stuff but if you wanted to go into those restaurants you had to have cash you couldn't use your debit card or credit card or anything like that so that took adjustments and just not having a lot of family around and as you know yuri and i are a mixed couple um and there were no black people there pretty much like maybe one or two no none <laughs> hey no Just no no wait me. no then there's that one restaurant up there and mm. that was a black owner so there was a couple <laughs> browns browns restaurant yeah so that but that was it i mean seriously that was it and this is where i grew up too you know so um like i kind of knew how it would be but it was the best decision for us at the time but that did cause a lot of issues too, because Yuri didn't have his family around. Um, we had to drive an hour and a half to see any family. So that kind of, you know, hurt there too, because it took Yuri some time to find a job when we moved up there. There's not a lot up there. No, there's not. <laughs> and so it took him. Um, I didn't want to be on there because, yeah, because there was chances, of course, like with your dad and whatnot, but I didn't want to work on tree farms. That's that's not me doing reefs and stuff like that y'all can have that <laughs> it's not me at all but uh i mean yeah you worked like a couple of jobs and then um at the restaurant by the house and stuff so you you had things that you were doing to help but it wasn't um you know what you really wanted to do first of all and then when you did get a job, it still wasn't like a, a good paying or decent paying. Mm -hmm. still wasn't good paying, but decent paying job at the time. Um, it was still hard work. It was rough on his body. I mean, he would come home in pain all the time. But before that, like when it was taking a while to find a job, um, you know, I would come home from work and he would be depressed because he was home with YJ all day, no family around. Um, you know, at least like when we're here, um, I'm able to go see my mom and things like that, you know, but Yuri didn't have anybody around. So it was just him and YJ until I came home. So I think that caused a lot of issues in the relationship too, because there was, I mean, you were just going through a really hard time and I took that personally sometimes and I had to figure out how to understand what he was going through and not always just expect him to meet my needs when his needs weren't being met. And not necessarily from me, but just in general, like he needed to have someone around an adult to talk to. yeah and there wasn't that for him and i needed to be there 
to help him through that. And it took me a while to understand that, you know, like I kind of felt like um, he was upset with me. There was just a lot of miscommunication, you know, like um, Yuri's not the kind of guy that just when he feels upset or something. I don't express my about. feelings. <laughs> yeah. I don't get emotional. I'm not going to tell you I'm, I'm sad right now. It's just, my feelings are hurt or something like that. I I just take what's coming and bury it deep down inside and keep it moving. Yeah, and I'm the opposite way. Like if I'm if you hurt my feelings, I'm gonna let you know that you hurt my feelings or you made me upset. And then we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna deal with it. So that the Ashley back then thought that everyone did that. I just thought that's how people handled things. And I didn't understand that different people react different ways. It took me a long time to really understand that. But as we continued to grow and started talking through our problems. I mean, that's a, as, as you mentioned this stuff, yeah, that's a big change. Because mm -hmm. me, I'm just, I don't know. I don't, I'm not really, I guess my communication back then was ass poor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was, and but at the same time, um, mine was as well because my response to you not sharing that information would be, I would get upset, I would get angry, and I would take it out on you instead of like trying to understand where you were coming from. So we both had poor communication just in different ways. You, you would shut down and then I would um, flip out. I mean, for lack of a better word, like I really would. And um, that wasn't good for either one of us, and it wasn't good for our son either. But I guess looking back on it, think you're you're working, busting your ass, doing whatever to provide, while me being a man, I'm sitting at home with our son, and not pretty much providing for our family. Where I'm sitting here depressed looking for work and mm -hmm. like we're out in the middle of nowhere there's nothing here or something if i do find a job it's going to be somewhere 45 minutes away or something like that so i'm depressed eating whatever just down and out and stuff like that yeah exactly so fast forward to um our move so i ended up getting a much better job and <laughs> was able to move back closer to our family. Uh, which back to civilization. It <laughs> was so great. Um, I was so excited. Uh, we both were, but we also knew that, you know, we were going to have more difficulties because we didn't have a place to, you know, we didn't have a house or anything yet. Uh, it was a very quick surprise move that we had to do. I didn't have a lot of time. And because I wasn't, um, the locations weren't far enough away. I didn't get like a relocation fee or anything to help with that move. So we ended up staying with my mother-in-law for a few months, maybe. Maybe six months. Yeah, months. something like that. Just enough time for us to save up a little bit of money and find exactly where we wanted to live, get a house and all that good stuff. So that was good, but Yuri was still having to drive about an hour, hour to work. Hour to and back. an hour from. Yeah, it was a lot. And it was like such little pay. I mean, barely over minimum wage, really. Mm -hmm. And so he was able to find a job, uh, like 10 minutes from the house, 10, 15 minutes, which was awesome. But he was second shift and it was like a really it was an odd late second shift. Second shift. It was so, like, what was it, like one o'clock to so, 11 or something Sometimes strange. it'd be one or three o'clock when he got off because they didn't have a third shift to take over. So if there was still stuff to be done, he just had to be there until it was done. So there were sometimes it was like one, two, three o'clock when you got home. And I didn't, I didn't know when he was going to be back. Um, also at that time I was working on a huge project for work. And so I was up to like midnight or more every night fixing that. And then I had to be in the office at seven. So it was just a lot of stress between the new job, 
new jobs, uh, <laughs> both of us um, living at my mother-in-law's house. And that's not even the tough part. You living with my mom and there's what, one, two, three, four, like five, seven people in the house. Seven yeah. People in so a when we moved down, <laughs> uh, when we moved back, it was just going to be us staying with her, but then your brother had to move back in too. And his girlfriend and his kids. So mm -hmm. there ended up being a lot of us in this tiny, 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 tiny little house. It wasn't that tiny, but it felt tiny when you had that many people. Well, we've got like seven, eight people. Uh, <laughs> what, four, four bedroom four house. Four bedroom house. Yes. Yeah. So it felt really tiny when you put all that many people in there. It's like your your sleeping patterns may not match to other people's <laughs> sleeping patterns. You need rest. They're, they just got off work, so they're over here talking or yeah. whatever's going on, watching TV. And it was it was so stressful. <laughs> like, the only thing that kept us going was, like, we're going to be getting a new house soon. Um, and so we were able to finally get our first house, like, that we owned, not from someone else. And how old were we? It was, like... 25 so I think I was like 25 when we bought our first house sure, does that sound it? right 25 sure. or 26 um because we've been here two years it's five I was about 25 or 26 when we bought our first house and it was cute it was a very cute house but it was an old house and it had a lot of issues and we put a lot of money in all remodeling those, and yeah. fixing this plumbing issue and putting down new floors mm -hmm. and more plumbing issues. <laughs> the gas, all the gas lines rusted out. And so it was leaking gas into the house. I mean, we had a lot of problems with that house. So uh, we, we invested a lot of money. We invested a lot of time, which meant that our uh, bills went mm -hmm. up. We got to the point where we were really struggling financially to make ends meet because uh, we just had so much that we had to invest into that. And then also, uh, the job that Yuri was working at the time, you were off pretty much the month of December and January, right? Yeah. By that time, I, I keep, I kept changing different jobs, going for higher paying jobs mm -hmm. and found one. And then this other one where in the winter season, cause it was, a lawn service in the winter season, it would shut down. They'd lay people off, maybe keep three or four people there for like a month or so and then bring everybody back. Yeah. So, you know, with all of that on top of each other, it was really stressful. And then we had daycare and all that stuff. And if you have a kid, you know how much daycare is. It's ridiculously priced. Uh, so we just had a lot going on with that. And, and then we, we had a second child. Yeah, and then we got <laughs> pregnant and had Camden. And that just um, drastically added to the stress because Cam has had issues. I mean, they can't officially diagnose him with asthma until he's like, I think, eight years old or something like that when they can do like a test. But um, he has had, they call it like chronic wheezing. So he's had that issue since he was six months old. He got RSV when he was really young and they believe that the scarring on his lungs has called, has led to these issues. So we were in the hospital multiple times a month for the first year of his life. And it would be to the point like at 3 AM we would wake up and hear him. <gasps> and that's just like the most terrifying noise you ever hear as a mother. And it didn't matter after I gave him the albuterol, like he would still be that way. And every single time I would have to take him into the ER, it would always be somewhere around three o'clock in the morning. This would happen. And anybody who has kids or goes to the doctor, once you go to the emergency room, that, that's, that's a bill bill. That ain't mm. just any other regular bill. That, that's expensive. Exactly. And so he always ended up having to have a steroid to open up his lungs. Like it was, awful and then we had the stress too the doctor was telling us like we got to do something because like he's in his prime growth period right now and all these steroids are going to potentially harm his growth 
And so we were terrified too that, you know, our child is going to have growth issues because of all the medicine he had to be put on. That was absolutely horrifying. Um, so with all of that, like, I just felt like things just kept happening. Right. And then he finally started calming down. By this point, I had switched jobs again after I had Cam. Bec um, I left the company that I was at for five years and changed to another company that was closer to home and um, it had daycare there. So that was extremely helpful. But, uh, and it was also a higher paying job. So that really, really helped out. But one of the biggest thing is, was the company I had currently worked for, they were going through major layoffs. And I was afraid that um, it was, it was going to hit my department. So, you know, I wanted to have that security for our you family. You say you were afraid, but that time you was, you was kind of hoping for it. Like, please, wouldn't it be nice if this just happened? And I was hoping <laughs> for it after I knew I had the other job. <laughs> That's the difference. Um, but yeah, so it was just a lot of stress and more new things. And then um, finally things seemed to calm down, right? So Cam stopped having to go to the hospital every month <laughs> and we decided that we were ready to have our third child because we had already, already ugh, can't talk, always talked about having three children. I kept striving for that girl, but no girls. <laughs> I kept letting her down. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was like, you know, we knew that we were ready to have our last child because I wanted to have all three of them before I turned 30, I just felt like, you know, we started young, like, I don't want to start young and in late too. <laughs> so, you know, at least half our golden years together, right? So we got pregnant with Amari and uh, shortly after, it was before I even knew the gender that we had a huge blow up in the bathroom, literally a blow up in the bathroom. Uh, the pipe busted, the sewage pipe busted, and stuff was all over the floor. It was absolutely disgusting. We had to completely have everything gutted out. We were um, told to get out and get a hotel room while they got in there and fixed everything. That's when we we're like, okay, that's enough. Like, we have to find a new house. So <laughs> that's when we decided to build this house because we were like, we're not dealing with those issues again it was just too much to have to worry about consistently having something go wrong. Yeah. Cause that's when the, our luck or fortune, whatever you want to call it, everything started changing. Mm -hmm. Cause what was it? I got a better paying job as we were in the middle of selling our old house and signing everything mm -hmm. to start building on this one. And, and then, then shortly after we moved in here, um, I got a call from a recruiter for a better paying job, which is where I'm at now. And uh, just the flexibility and things were much better for our family. So that started really helping, helping there. But then, and with that, Yuri and I, we were, he got uh, a new shift too. So we were able to see each other more. Okay. So I know this is, sounds weird and backwards, right? But this is where the problem started coming in because we had spent so much time just fixing all these issues, working towards these goals and problems that we had to fix, right? Um, spending a lot of time apart because of our work schedules. And now that we were together more, we still never fixed our communication issues. The only thing we did was cover them up by not being around each other a lot. So one thing that happened was um, those communication issues and like all these hurt feelings and things started coming out more because we were finally seeing each other. And we were, we got to the point where we're like, okay, listen, I'm tired of arguing constantly. <clears throat> over little things, it would be small stuff. Um, but it's like, I'm tired of constantly arguing. Like 
you're not listening to me from both perspectives. Mm -hmm. I wasn't listening to him. He wasn't listening to me. We thought we were listening to each other. We never did anything to intentionally hurt each other. Let me stop you. That's where there's a difference between listening to hear what the person says and then hearing just so you can respond Mm -hmm. where you're not actually, okay, she's what she's actually saying is I need to, she, she feels I'm not doing this Mm -hmm. and this is what I could be doing and things would be better. Exactly. We were just always on the defense. Like we felt like we were being personally attacked when the other person would say how they felt. It's like, if we would just listen to one another, we're both saying the same shit. (laughs) It's like, yeah, I'm not listening. Yeah. You're not listening. This is what we need to do. Okay. Break. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So we decided the best thing for our marriage was to go to counseling because we had tried and tried and tried on our own and it just wasn't working. Like we, we couldn't understand how to understand each other. And so we decided to go to counseling. And that, that shit works. That was the best decision <laughs> we've ever made in it's our like life. It's like when you have an outsider who doesn't give a damn about either one of you, <laughs> who you're paying to sit there and tell you, you go over certain things and, and I'm sitting there like, are you sure? I have to do this. I have to, even if she continues talking, I got to sit here and I got to say exactly what she said to me. And I'm like, oh my goodness, man, damn, you asking a lot. (laughs) I was just like, I was like, oh my gosh, this guy finally understands what I need. And he's able to explain it to him in a way that I've never been able to do it. You know, like not only does he understand what I need, but he can teach Yuri how to understand what I need. (laughs) And it was the same the other way around because Again, I'm a very impatient person. And so when I ask a question, I expect a response like immediately. And Yuri likes to think about his responses before he I have tells to, you. I have to weigh everything in my mind. I have to <laughs> picture it that way. Because if I start talking, as you can notice, I'll get excited and things may not come out picture perfect with my communication, but in my mind, that shit sounds perfect. I delivered it straight there to you. You got it. We're on the same page, but you may have thought I zigged where I zagged or something like that, where it comes off a little mixed up. Yeah. So I had to learn how to be patient with him. And when I asked you a question, I can't get upset because you didn't immediately respond. And also like Yuri, he likes to respond um, with these short, simple answers. Like, how's your day? (laughs) Good. Good. (laughs) And that's all I'll get if that's all I ask. So I have to like dig a little deeper and then dig a little deeper. And like each next question is like opening, like he, he would talk about, it's like opening a new file. Like I can open a file here and then I get a response. Okay, now let me open another file and I'll get a little bit deeper and let me open another file. So I just have to keep like kind of probing to get these responses for what I'm looking for. Whereas if Yuri says, Ashley, how was your day? I'd be like, oh my gosh, this (laughs) happened and this happened and this happened and then it made me feel this way and now I feel like this and I can't believe all this happened, you know? So (laughs) like, and so that's what I expect to hear. But to get that, I just have to ask, the question differently and I think that's really not only helped our marriage but it's helped me as a person to be able to communicate with others better others who don't um respond and react the way that I do I can now communicate with them better because me I always knew I'm in let me get it right I'm an introvert I'm not really going to be this person who walks up to you all happy. Hey, how's, how's your day? How's everything going? How's the family? This and that. And talkative. I may see you. What's up, man? How you doing? Or just, just to be cordial and speak. Unless I'm comfortable around you and then we can we can talk, have a good time or whatever it may be. Yeah, exactly. And I'm complete opposite. So, <laughs> which they say opposites attract and we do. And But, you know, it's like hard to believe that it was that simple of a solution. And we, after, by the time I went to counseling, I think we had been married eight years. Mm -hmm. It was last year, right? So eight years of marriage and we weren't able to figure this out on our, by ourselves. And within like three months, we, we were able to communicate for like the first time 
<laughs> in our relationship. Yeah, because especially every now and then, well, I'm going to say every now and then, we're, we're married, so yeah, we we argue all the time and stuff like that. But now... All the time anymore. But now, it's a good thing. But <laughs> but now, we have a dis- disagreement. Does that yes, sound better? Yes, disagreement. We have a disagreement and we'll we'll even laugh about it or something <laughs> like that where we're able to communicate and say, okay, I'm sorry, this is what I should have did. Yeah. I really apologize. I wasn't thinking... Or exactly. like you, or like you told me the other night when Cam woke up or whatever, and you said I told you you get him. I've been doing stuff all day, <laughs> and keep in mind this is I've had back spasms for like a, like a week or two or something. So I haven't really been doing too much, but laying on the floor and stretching and stuff like that, and trying to walk to help my back out. So she's telling me the next, or no, I go to hug or hold her, and she's. It's, and I could tell something's wrong. I'm like, because the there was the, a pillow between us. <laughs> I'm like, the the vibe is off. What is what is up with this woman? I'm like, dang, I ain't even do nothing. And I'm like, hey, is, is that is that something you're not telling me? And this and that. She's like, yeah. Because I asked you about the pillow. I'm like, what's this pillow do? So I threw it at you. I'm like, you threw a pillow at me. I'm like, for what? What happened? She's like, oh, you don't remember? I'm like, no, I, don't, I have no clue what you're talking about. It's like, well, Cam woke up. Well, I'll let you, you describe it because hell, you were there. I was, I was, sleeping. I don't know. I said, Cam woke up and he needed somebody. And I was like, Yuri, can you get up? Because I've been up with him twice. Can you just please get up and take him to the bathroom? And he sat up and he said, I've been doing stuff with him all day. You ain't done nothing. And I was like, what have you done? He said, I took him to bed. <laughs> I do not remember this conversation at all. Keep in mind, this isn't the first time that he's talked to me in his sleep yeah, and not she, know. The fact that she said, I sat up. <laughs> and then, because like when she told me, you said, or you told me, I said that I've done everything. I laughed. <laughs> I like, I told you I did everything. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I was like, well, damn, I, I could have came up with a better damn lie than that. Because <laughs> you said, man, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. My back hurts or something. But I've done everything. Yeah, I'll tell you, I don't remember that. I'm sorry. That, that wasn't me. <laughs> exactly. So like something like that conversation that happened that night before, I mean, it would have probably been days before we would have been okay with that because I would have been upset and you would have gotten upset with me. I would have been upset because she was upset with me and I don't even remember doing yeah. something. <laughs> so like it would have been probably a week long of arguments and different things that would have been brought up with that because we wouldn't have been able to communicate that to each other and with this one like we laughed it off in like 10 minutes of waking up and we've we were, still been laughing about it we <laughs> yeah. bring it up in this and that <laughs> exactly but now we're like able to move on about it you know it's it's not that big of a deal like we understand how to communicate that and give each other what we need exactly yeah so the marriage counseling has been a huge help for us. And what I want to, the point that we want to get to on this is to say that, you know, you don't have to struggle for things alone, right? And you don't have to be perfect at everything. You can ask for help. Even if you've been married 10, 15, 20, 30 years, like you can ask for help because sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. Um, No matter what age you get married. I mean, we got married young and I think that led to a lot of the things that um, we have because we just didn't understand how to communicate. We didn't fully even know ourselves yet. And then on top of both coming from growing up with parents who are divorced and mm-hmm. stuff like that, you see the chaos that's going on around you and stuff like that. So that becomes your new normal or whatever. But of course, us coming into our marriage, we don't want to go through the same thing our parents have gone through. We want to stay together through What's the saying? Death do us, thick and thin, death Death do us us part, part, and so on and so forth. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, like, ask for help. Um, And I know that marriage counselors can be expensive, but at least bring a friend in, do something, you know? I don't know about a friend. Not a friend. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Because friends can cause issues in marriages. Don't do that. Yeah, friends (laughs) friends can turn into enemies to who spread everything that you've told them in confidence. Yeah, I would prefer, you know, seek professional help because they're the ones that are really going to be able to guide you down that path. Um, And there are services out there that can help, especially for some companies like our company will provide 
what is it like four or five sessions free, something like that. So a lot of um, healthcare and uh, insurance things will provide different things now. So that's really great. Yeah, definitely take advantage of it. Do what you can, <laughs> learn to communicate, cut off the TV mm -hmm. and all the extra noise, stare at each other and sit here. And best thing about it is what I take away from the counseling is to don't just go in with all this, you this, that, you're yeah. this and that, pointing the blame is sort of butter them up. Say, I love you. You're a great mom. You're this and that. You listen well. And that way they're hearing all this good stuff. So their guard is down mm -hmm. and then just sort of ease. But can you please, whatever, I would really appreciate that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, I think the two things that I have taken away and that um, we still use on a regular basis is the compliments. So when you're upset with the other person, it's so easy to talk about things that aggravate you, but compliment them, right? So every time you say or do something to hurt the other person, tell them three compliments about themselves. Uh, and then also the other thing is like, if I'm upset with Yuri if, uh, or whatever, after an argument, hold his hand. You may hate it. I hate it. <laughs> you may absolutely despise it because it's hard to hold somebody's hand when you just had an argument, right? But that physical touch softens the mood and allows you to have a conversation. Yeah, it'll make for great makeup sex. <laughs> that too. <laughs> so, you know, the, the biggest thing is like seek help. You don't have to do things alone. And I know that a lot of us feel that if we ask for help, that we're not strong, but it's the complete opposite. It takes strength to ask for help when you need it. Yeah, it takes strength to admit you got, you're fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> Shit is not right. So you need help somewhere. Exactly. So please, if any of you are struggling with your relationship or if it's even just something personal that you're struggling with. Yeah, it could be something mental, whatever mm -hmm. you're going through, especially with everything with going on mental right health now. and everything, seek help. Yeah, yes, please. Because it's not a weakness. It's a strength to be able to seek out help and know that you need support. Definitely. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining in with us. I know this was kind of a tough one. It was tough for us because we've, you we've know, lived this. yeah, we've lived this and nobody wants to talk about their mistakes and their past, but it happens and learning from it and understanding and knowing how to get past those, that's what's going to make you a stronger person. So thank you so much for joining in with us today and we will see you next week. Holla. Bye.